Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Innovato Holdings. Uh, I'd like to apologize uh, for some of the technical issues that we had the other day. Unfortunately, it was out of our hands, so there was not much we could do about it, but we decided to, to create this video so that, so that we could get all the information to you about the Servico system. So let's dive into it. I'd just like to show you a little product video first. And uh, on the right side, you see some beautiful cervical and uh, submergence profiles created by my partner, Ioannis. So sit back, relax, get your beverage of choice, and we'll get into this um, uh, presentation. So let's see what the experts say about Servico. We've been very fortunate to have met a lot of people from around the world. Um, this is just a few, but I'd like to share two um, uh, testimonials here. In situations of immediate implant placement, especially in the posterior teeth, Servico system enables me to perfectly seal the socket around the implant and the support and to support the existing soft tissue architecture, resulting in excellent healing, anatomic preservation, and healthy maturation. Professor Nitsan Bitasho from Israel. From the moment I had the Cervico system in my hands, instantly I knew that this is the system. This system was the missing link for the umbrella concept. It has become a key component and made my day-to-day -day practice fast, accurate, very predictable in developing my cervical and submergence profiles. Game changer for me, Dr. Alberto Miselli from Venezuela. We're very, very grateful for all these uh, testimonials and you can see many, many more of them. Uh, or follow Cervico, which is uh, on, our, on Facebook and one of the pages that we've got. There's many more and I will let you know about all those later on. So, we must respect what we know. And of course, there is a lot of studies on the transmucosal zone. And what my partner and I wanted to try and do to create was, uh, our goal was basically to be able to provide a solution that would help the clinician create the optimum result in the transmucosal zone fast, accurately, and predictably. So this is my partner and the CEO of Innovato Holdings. Uh, it's Dr. Ioannis Vergulis. He finished his perio program in LSU in the USA. I'd like to just a little bit of story about how I met Ioannis. Uh, I never knew him, but we were both from the same island in Greece or from the island of Rhodes. And uh, five years ago, we had met in uh, a dental laboratory, DKT lab, very good friends of ours. And I could see he had a lot of passion, fire in his stomach. He was trying to design things, create things. So I could sort of see myself in him. And he started to tell me about things that he was trying to create, to, to help him to do the first osteotomy in a much easier, more predictable manner and blah, 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 blah. But I was traveling to Australia for my other business at that time. And on my return, I got to, to speaking with him and he invited me down to the surgery. So I went and I stayed there for four and a half years, basically, <laughs> developing the Servico system together with him. So it's been an amazing journey and I'd just uh, like to thank him very, very much for it. It's been amazing. It's had its ups, downs, ups and downs, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Anyway, let's dive into the system. So it comprises of two components. It's the Servico mold and the Servico guide. The cervical mold is where we manufacture, fabricate all the custom healing abutments and impression posts. Posts. The cervical, uh, the cervical guide is a diagnostic tool which is used uh, for identifying the dental space, but it's much more than that, and I will go in, into it in detail. Cervical guide. Uh, Ioannis had brought to my attention something called the parallax effect. I didn't know what it was, but he explained it to me as like, if you're uh, on the right hand side of the patient, uh, going into the left mandible, so a left molar or something, and 
with uh, his drill and he wants to do his first osteotomy and he thinks that he's in the right position. He books in, he drills in and then looks at a different angle and can see that mm, I've gone a little bit more distal. Mm, I've gone a bit more lingual. So he was trying at the time when I met him in the lab to try and to create some little tooling that he could use to, to, to relieve this stress from himself and to, to be able to do it predictably. And that's uh, how uh, the guide came to life. And all the parts of the actual system itself, uh, there's a little video here, it works on magnetic connection, okay? So this little video shows you how it's picked up. Yep. So on the actual guide itself, all the, all the, all the tabs have identification codes on them. And as you can see, I've blown up one of the photos there of one of the tabs and it says AM. It's anterior medium. Also on the actual mold itself, which is this, all those codings are around here. So whatever coding is on the tabs is also on the actual ring in this area because each coding is designated to the well of the mold. Okay, I think that makes it clear. So this is what is in the actual cervical guide. You see all the parts here. Now, let me talk to you about the cylindrical ones. There is eight in total and they are numbered from five to 12. Five, uh, uh, five to 12, meaning the number is actually in millimeters in diameter is the actual uh, circumference of each and every tab. So 12 is 12 millimeters all the way down to five. Now you can see that there is a laser uh, T line uh, in the actual tab itself. It's been laser printed onto the actual tab itself. And then there is a borehole in the center of every tab, which is 2.2 millimeters in diameter. And this is where he will pass his pilot drill to do the first osteotomy. So this is a perfect example for you to see here. You can see that he's got the seven millimeter tab, but it doesn't fit into this edentulous space. So he goes one size smaller to the six, positions it in between the two teeth, and lines up the laser printed lines with the interdental groove of the bicuspid and the distal of the canine and that is dead center so more photos just here and this is the actual case and he's going in with his drill and he begins his osteotomy on the tab itself where the arrow is there is also a borehole in that area there and the reason for that is exactly this if you feel a little bit uncomfortable, you're able to pass some floss through there and just get your assistant to hold on to it, just in case you feel a little bit on, on edge and you're not sure and you don't want anybody ingesting a tab. So this is a, uh, a, a slide that is created and it's a very good information. So seven millimeter tab, let's say for instance, you're able to use an implant platform size of three to four millimeters. Again, 10 millimeter uh, edential space, three to seven millimeter platform size is your, your option. So it's nice to have in your office. Of course, always um, taking into consideration the 1.5 millimeter safety zone mesiodistally. Now, the anatomically shaped tabs were, are in four groups, anterior, premolar, uh, lower molars and maxillary molars. And there is two holes, two boreholes in the center of each of those. And I will go into that a little bit later on to make it more clear. As you can see here, uh, the uh, laser printed on the actual tabs themselves are specific T-lines. These T-lines are there for a reason. If we need to orientate uh, the uh, anatomically shaped healing abutment, it must be orientated specifically because it's an anatomical shape it cannot be orientated in any, any different way so you need to orientate your implants in the same direction so this this is the reason for those t lines that are on the actual tabs themselves so this gives you an understanding that we need to line up the hex of our implant on this specific case to the buckle 
Now, it works with the hexagon, octagon, trilobe, cams. All these systems have been uh, pre-evaluated and we, it all works with this, so it's not an issue. This gives you a better understanding. Now, as you can see here on the left, uh, the actual tab has been positioned mesio distal, and on the right, bacolingual. And the T lines on the tabs allow, let you know exactly which orientation your implant needs to be uh, positioned. Of course, if you're using non-engaging abutments, it's not going to matter because any position that you put it in, you just tighten it in position and you're okay. So cervical guide pins. There are four in total in the actual kit itself. And they are numbered from, the, well, the actual dimensions of these are basically correlate to the actual implant drill systems around the world. There's so many different systems, but the numbers are very, very close, as you can see here on the right. So uh, there is a centered hole that you see in the, in the center there, and I've just got one here just to show you. Okay, we also have a safety precaution here. So you can actually pass some floss through the actual pin itself, just in case you feel a little, little bit uncomfortable and you're a little bit scared that you may, may lose it. Now I'll explain what they're used for. And they've been designed, the belly of them have been designed so that they're the actual implant platform size. So 3.2, 3.5, 4.5, 5.7. And the reason for this, well, as you can see, once it's been positioned into the osteotomy, you have a plethora of information. You're able to understand, uh, am I too buckle? Am I too lingual? Am I so much information automatically there at that moment? And it's because basically the actual size itself uh, is the actual implant in position. So if you need to augment bone, you can see that you don't have enough bone. You need to do extra work. The pins give you a, a lot of information at that moment. Also, uh, as being used as a diagnostic tool, patient comes back from ortho. We're not sure, can we put a, an implant in, the, in this edentulous region? We need to make sure that we don't violate the 1.5 millimeter safety zone, mesiodistally. So by using the smallest size tab that we have, which is five millimeters, if it does not fit in that position, um, you may not be able to do anything with that. So just try and avoid these kind of situations. So it's great for diagnosis. Cervical depth gauge. Okay, all these um, uh, uh, parts that you see in the actual cervico guide again work with magnetic connection so uh it was an issue in the surgery with Ioannis. So i was watching him work and i could you know he was using the probe with the lines that you see here in the top right photo but it was very difficult to see to evaluate anything to understand anything and it made it difficult for me to also understand what was going on so i said to him you know we've got to make something better than this it's it, it this doesn't work so we designed, this is the actual very first one that we designed. It's all in millimeters and it allows you to, to be able to determine depth of implant placement, uh, soft tissue height, thickness, all sorts of different things. And they come up beautifully in photography. So you need to determine the zenith of the crown. You need to know if your implant is deep enough and here is a good uh, example of this um, to know if you've got enough room for uh, soft tissue so biology can do its thing so it's a great little tool for all these uh, specific points this is actually the latest design and um, i have a few of them here and as you can see they all work on magnetic connection uh, and it's really, really wonderful, and they come up beautiful in photography. Now, this is the actually the new model, and um, we've got one tip which is 90 degrees, and the other tip is 45 degrees. 45 you can use more in the anterior region, so it becomes a little bit more versatile, uh, and the 90 for the posterior region. 
and we've actually tapered the, the, the pin a lot thinner towards the base so that you can really go straight into your osteotomy and actually see implant depth much, much easier and more accurate, of course. Uh, and these are some photos that you can see here uh, done by my, my daughter. Uh, beautiful photos for a good examples of how the uh, product works. So, cervical mold. Now, this is a metallic structure, which I have here to show you. And you, you can see that the actual top part of this turns. And then you can see it in the actual video itself. Okay. Now, we have a silicon insert, which is in the top of this here. That silicon insert can be removed in this way. Right? There is a duplication well here. By putting your finger in it, you just remove it and you're done. So we need to set up the mold so that it can work with your implant system. So basically what we have created are these lab analogs. Okay, They are basically, sorry, they are implant replicas. Okay. Now, basically, they are the same thing as a, a lab analog or your implant. And I've superimposed one over uh, the, a bone and gingiva here, just to give you an understanding of what it's really, how it's actually allocated in the actual mold itself. So by removing the silicon mold, I'll just move on to the next slide. You can see that there is 36 sockets around this. Okay, 36. And they're all numbered and they are numbered for a specific reason. And I'll go into that in a minute. Let's just say, for example, as you can see here, there is a T line on the front of the actual um, analog as well, uh, an arrow. There it is there. And that is lined up within the mold and it just goes in position and then you secure it from the back with a screw. This is the basic, basic way that the actual uh, uh, replicas are situated into the mold. Let me just move on. So as you can see here, the process, it's positioned and then there is a, a screw that you just... Uh, secure it to the base and there is a three-dimensional predetermined position for this okay so everything is already organized you don't have to stress on that now there are four groups of sockets within the actual mold itself we have crystal placement uh, crystal implant placement sockets 1 to 12 any one of those 1 to 12 can be used for crystal implant placement. Depending on the implant system you're working with, depending on the way you, uh, your protocol in your surgery, how you like to work, do you like to go one millimeter, two millimeters deep, whatever, we have provided uh, a way for this to be um, pre-organized in the system. So sockets 13 to 24, uh, one millimeter subcrestal, sockets 25 to 33, two millimeter subcrestal sockets 34 to 36 three millimeter subcrestal so it's all organized for any si uh, situation you may have and this is a beautiful photo from uh, uh, a very good friend dr alberto miselli and it shows you the actual um, position of the uh, replicas within the mold so the first one is crestal Second is uh, one millimeter subcrestal, two millimeter subcrestal, three millimeter subcrestal. Now, the further down in the mold it goes, it just means the further down in the bone your implant is. It's the same thing, exactly. The difference is in shape of your actual custom healing abutment. As you can see in this diagram, the further down you are, there is a difference in shape of the actual composite that you will create in the wells. But the beauty of this is this, is that because it's composite, 
you have the ability to cut back and do whatever you need to be able to modify chair side in seconds. So this is something that uh, my partner had done, root membrane technique. He needed to allow to create space there so biology could do it, its work and be far away from the actual root itself. So by shaving it back instantaneously, he had the room to allow biology to do its thing. So this is a little video here. I'm going to stop and start it as I'm talking to you. And it's just um, a wonderful little video that just shows a few little tricks that uh, is done by my partner. He's got the pin in position, puts his first implant in. He will check with the depth gauge to see how deep he is, to see if he's okay. Now this, as you can see here, he's lined up the tab. There is the T-line, which is the markers on the actual laser, on, on the tab itself. And he will drive through with his pilot drill and he will have a perfect osteotomy. Goes in with his next drill. And at this point, he will put the pin. So by putting the pin, he's able to see what the platform size would look like in in uh, accordance with the adjacent teeth and all the rest of it he puts his tab on top and by putting his tab on top he's also able to understand what his custom healing cap will look like as well so he puts his implant in position he does some bone augmentation here Three months later, lovely healing here. You can see the bicuspid, uh, you can actually see the cover screw sort of shining through a little bit. So it's quite easy for him to determine the position of that. But let's look at the molar as we move on. Difficult to see where the molar is, but he does a little trick here, which is really neat and I'd like you to see it. He takes his probe, positions the tab on top because he has a plethora of information. He's all his old videos from the first surgery. He goes into this before he does the second surgery. He knows basically what he had done. So he puts the probe, puts the tab in position, and it gives him an understanding of where he was. So he doesn't have to remove too much bone he just goes in and he finds the cover screw immediately he will now put on the custom healing abutment and he can determine now now do i need to relieve some of the composite because yep it's too it's too tight there's no room for biology to do its work so immediately he can remove and reduce and give the shape that he needs. The mouth is unpredictable. So you need to be versatile. You need to be able to play with these things. And composite allows you to do that. As long as you polish it properly, you're never going to have an issue. So I'll move along. So we need to keep track of what parts are in the actual mold themselves. So you need to keep track of your analog replicas. You may be using um, different systems, but your nurses, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, will be making these custom healing abutments for you. It's a very simple task, and the girls often have quite a bit of time. We've trained our nurses how to do it. We don't make them anymore, and we will show you how we organize ourselves in the surgery. So inside the actual um, system, there is a chart and it tells you where you and allows you to put the mold position, implant brand, company, whatever, platform size. All the information is there and you just have to fill out the chart. And we, we put the chart up on the wall so that the girls remember where if every implant uh, uh, replica is in the mold. 
So here you can see we've got the breed end, the uh, sky, breed end copper in certain positions within the mold. Again, this is just for their information so that they don't make any mistakes and um, create issues in the, in the surgery. Now, choose the ideal temporary abutment. I can't tell you how important this is, ladies and gentlemen. This is very, very important. The implant uh, companies have created many different components that you can use. So when we're positioning um, and we're, we're using a protocol, let's say um, one millimeter subcrestal, you need to make sure that you have uh, a temp abutment with a cuff height that will be, allow you to work properly. We don't want to have within the bone composite. So I'll just move a little bit on to the next slide and this makes it much, much more clear. Okay, so for, for crestal placement, you can have a cuff height of 0 0.5 to 2 millimeters. Uh, one, uh, minus one subcrestal, 1.5 to 3. Minus 2, 2.5 to 4. And minus 3, 3 to 0.5 to 5. So the cuff height is very important. And as you can see in the diagram there above, you can see that we have uh, polished titanium within the bone. And this is really important. So choose the shoulder height according to the depth of placement. Okay, very important. So how do we make custom healing abutments within the mold? How do you fabricate? Again, you can use titanium, peak, multi-unit type systems, snap-on two-piece systems. All of these things are working with us. So, you've determined the actual well that you're going to, uh, the well that you're going to use and the shape and size of um, healing abutment you need. You take your temp abutment, position it within the well, screw it to your analog, which is in the base, already predetermined. And then in increments, fill with composite as you go up and you fill like one millimeter of composite within the actual well, hit it with the light for 60 seconds, fill it up uh, afterwards or to the height that you need it to be. And then hit it again with the light for 60 seconds. I always like to remove them from uh, within the mold and then hit them from the base as well. And then of course you need to uh, cut them back a little bit and polish from the top. You must replicate the exact profile that you wanted to create as a healing cap um, in the beginning with your impression post. You need to replicate exactly because you've already created the healing cap. We need to replicate this in the custom healing abutment. In, in, sorry, in the impression post. So we do this again in the same process, in the same well, same protocol. So two P systems uh, are not a problem. Uh, my partner has got uh, several referral dentists. They're all working with different systems, breed end, mega gen, this and that and the other. So he has to have versatility and uh, everything seems to be working fine. Let's snap on two P system. So you can customize any prosthetic component. It's not an issue. Everything is doable. So get the info to the lab. And this is key. They need to have the exact replica of what is in the mouth at that time. Now, the silicon inserts. I'd just like to show you here. Now, we have the mold itself and we have the silicon inserts. Now, there are two different silicon inserts. And as you can see on the slide that I've showed you just here, there is a centered silicon insert and an offset silicon insert. Why is this? These two laterals that you see here on the top of this uh, slide, these are both in the same mouth. Now, the, the top left has been positioned centrally. There was enough bone there, didn't have an issue, so it was presented, uh, was manufactured in the actual centered mold, silicon mold. 
Now, the other one is being positioned off center. There wasn't enough bone, so uh, it had to go more palatally. So you have to change the silicon inserts to create. And the reason for that is because you have to be able to compensate for the composite so that we can support the soft tissue. Okay? And that is the reason for the two holes in the anatomically shaped tabs. This is a better uh, picture for you to see here. And you can see exactly how this looks. The offset and the centered. And this wonderful photo is uh, from a very good friend of ours, Dr. Alberto Miselli. Live in the mouth, it gives you a very good understanding. We have offset and the centered position. Beautiful. Submergence profile and cervical profiles here. So looking at the uh, schematic on the top, you can see where I, I, we say bone crest. But as you can see, the deeper the actual implant is, the the deeper the actual implant is, yes, the changes in the actual shape of the um, composite. So you can understand there are, diff there are changes in the shape. Okay, The deeper you go, the more tubular it will become. And the system has at least 120 different options. So because there's 36 um, sockets, you're able to put in 36 different implant um, brands. That gives you up to 4,320 custom healing apartments. I mean, it's over the top, but the ability is there. And yes, your assistants can fabricate what you need in less than three minutes. But at this moment, I'd like to make it a little bit more clear that it's better to plan ahead. This is what we do. We, we have cassette boxes with all these parts because, he's, uh, again, I said, Ioannis works as a referral dentist. He's working with many different brands. So we have all these cassette boxes already organized with the implant brands inside and the custom healing abutments that need to be created and impression posts. So the girls have planned the program for the day or the week and they know what they need to have. So these are already pre-made. So as soon as they see them go down to one unit or two units, they fabricate a couple when they have a bit of spare time. So the, so the kits are never without parts. They're always topped up so that it's, there's no, at the last minute, oh, everybody's rushing uh, when we're doing a surgery. Pre-planned, it's much easier. So what if I want to customize a custom healing abutment even more like modify it even more and change it because you need to uh, again like i said the mouth is unpredictable so you want to do something better this is a lower molar that i made for a friend of mine and i wanted to just uh, change it up a bit and give it a, a little bit of a different shape so we've created a duplication well this is actually in the mold itself and this is the actual duplication well that you can see here I suggest that we that you um, smear the actual well with some Vaseline. Then you position in the healing abutment. Tighten it down to your analog, which is in the base. And then you uh, pour some uh, clear silicon around there, inject si uh, clear silicon around and allow it to set. Remove it, give it back to the dentist so that he can put it back into the patient's mouth. Uh, so we don't get any tissue collapsing and whatever. And you have time and ease to create your uh, custom impression post. Once your impression post is ready, polish it up, get it ready. Quick switch and everybody is happy. It's a very simple process. Ah, again, this is from, uh, from Alberto. Uh, same thing exactly. Uh, use, utilizing his, uh, and his beautiful umbrella concept. So a quick way to make a relatively accurate surgical guide that is cost effective. Now here you can see, I've actually got parts here to actually show you as well. So you can predetermine and position a, uh, one of the metal tabs in the edentulous space and create 
the actual state. Suck down. Okay? But so that you don't damage the actual metallic tabs, uh, there is a way to make them um, from resin. Okay, so uh, I'll just show you the process and these photos here just basically explain how you can do that. So what you do is you take your pin, uh, which is the predetermined size of the drill that you're going to use, you lubricate it with a little bit of Vaseline and turn it upside down in your well, as you can see here. Fill it with composite, hit it with the light, 60 seconds, and then remove that from your pin. And then you have a replica. These replicas now, these are dummy tabs. These replicas now can be positioned on the model. This was uh, a full mouth that uh, I'd done for Ioannis. And you can see in the anterior region, they were all uh, positioned offset. And in the posterior region, they were all positioned in the central position. He, of course, he determined all the positions. Uh, I didn't do this. Uh, he decided where they would go. And after his CBCT evaluation and all the rest of it, and then we position them on the model and the suck down is created. Very quick, very simple, quite accurate. Don't forget it's the first and second osteotomy. We're not doing digital full uh, implant placement. This is just first and second osteotomy. That's what it's used for. All right, but it's very, very cost effective and very accurate. So we did a process here with uh, our very good friend, Dr. Movara Keshvari from uh, Portugal. She had done CBCT evaluation on this patient as well and sent me the STLs of, these mo of, of the edentulous uh, model and also she did a, a digital wax up uh, as you can see here so i went back into the lab and positioned the actual uh, tabs in position then i sent her uh, this information so the, she could see the angulation depth and all the rest of it to evaluate it that it was okay and then i actually made the dummy tabs for her also positioned them on the model. She evaluated this also. And then the stents, the thermoplastic surgical guides are processed and made, trimmed back. And this is sent to her, but we went one step further here. And of course, this is very cost effective, ladies and gentlemen. So I had made all the uh, healing abutments um, and impression posts for, the, for this patient, uh, pre-made. And what you see here, everything is being done with the Breed End brand. So all these parts integrated very, very nicely for us here. So here you can see the um, healing caps that were created, the impression posts on the right-hand side. Then I actually prepped the healing caps. and created temporary abutments, single temporary abutments over all of them. The patient had a very big business trip that they needed to get to. And uh, this is the final solution. The actual final case, I think it was um, uh, after COVID, so it will probably come out later on. But this just shows you that you, you have the ability to, to, it's very versatile, there's many things that you can do with the system itself. So let's go through some uh, clinical protocols just to show you a healed ridge situation. Evaluate the edentula space with the anatomical tab. Position the, uh, the cylindrical tab in position to, to create your first osteotomy. Line up everything in position. Now you go in. As you can see here on the left, I've made a little black line. It looks like it's just a tad distal, okay? But then you look at the picture on the right, Ioannis corrected it. 
immediately. So you have the ability to do these slight corrections. But it, it gives you a very, very accurate positioning. This uh, patient was two-stage protocol. This is the uncovery. And you can see wonderful, wonderful cervical profile, submergence profile, all the good things in there that we need. So the one functional position impression technique uh, was something that helped us a lot. And what we have here is we have the impression post. Now we position it in the mouth and we put some composite externally just over the actual gingiva itself and hit it with the light for 30 seconds. What this does is it creates an actual um, ball effect on the outside and it, it, what it does is it, it allows you to lock this in position in the impression without any issues. The technician can only put it in that position. There is no other way for it to go. And it can, you can see it's sealed and it is in position. This is very important, especially when you're doing multiple units. This was an amazing day. And this is, um, this is at my family's personal dentist, uh, Dr. Marietta Calogiro. And it was at the time that, uh, it was about four months ago, uh, Dr. Alberto Miseli had come to Rhodes. We were brainstorming again and, you know, he's been several times and we love him to bits, but he had a sore tooth on that day, the poor guy. So we, I took him to our dentist and uh, I just wanted to uh, upload this. He was a good boy. <laughs> so I'd like to show you some of Marietta's work. Of course, she works with Ioannis and this is a wonderful technician from Greece also, Maria Spanopoulou. She's also a KOL for Ivoclar and also for my other company, MPF Brush. So this is some of their exceptional work that they do together. Beautiful emergence profiles that you see here. Lovely, lovely work. Now, as you can see, this is, this is what is important that we have polished titanium and polished zirconia. Just go further on. Uh, you can see the insertion of the final restoration here and the before and after. A lovely job. This is some more work that you see here from Marietta, but you can actually see here at top left how the uh, hex has been orienta orientated by Ioannis. And of course, on the bottom left, the little ball effect of the, on the composite for the one impression, uh, one functional impression technique. Again, as I said, properly selected uh, components are very important to the final outcome of your restoration. And properly designed and polished prosthesis is key to the long-term success. And in this area, um, we need to use uh, zirconia in the submergence profile or titanium, of course. Now, we have several products at uh, Innovata Holdings to allow uh, us to help with this, um, this region in the polishing. We have diamond polishing pastes, uh, bristle brushes, etc. for doing all this kind of work. But also we have um, these beautiful diamond impregnated silicon rubber burrs. Okay? Now, these allow us to create a very nice finish to the actual zirconia itself, which is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. These are our accessories and what we also have our flow composite that uh, allows us to, to create some beautiful um, uh, custom healing abutments and it flows very nicely and plus it's radio opaque and also uh, scannable because it's got quite an amount of titanium dioxide in it. And these are the uh, diamond impregnated silicon discs for polishing. It starts at medium grade, fine, and then super fine. So you get a luster finish on the actual zirconium. Delivery of a clean prosthesis is very important. Okay, so we can't reiterate more about that. Very, very important uh, procedure before the uh, final restorations are positioned in the mouth. This is a wonderful photo from um, Benjamin Cortase and Philippe Lobel uh, from France. 
uh, as you can see, very nicely integrated um, prosthesis. And uh, Ioannis has been using this product for oral care from Blue M um, for over a year now and um, is very, very satisfied with the healing. And we've become very good friends with the owners and uh, it seems to be doing a wonderful job when it comes to healing. So conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. We need stable foundations and solutions for long-term stability in dental implantology. It's key. And the thing is, do you care? If you care, you need to think about the solutions. And we have created something we believe uh, is a game changer and will be soon um, standard of care in surgeries around the world. And of course, education, we'll be doing a lot of seminars and a lot of uh, lecturing around the world. And once all this COVID is over, hopefully everything will be over very soon. And investment in knowledge pays the best interest, as uh, Benjamin Franklin once said. And again, teamwork. Teamwork is important. Only then does the dream work. And I'd like to just, you know, make a, a small point here. Get in sync with your laboratory. The technical side and the surgical side need to join up and make things happen. And really, wonderful things can happen. So this is just a little dedication to uh, some of the most amazing people that we've met around the world that are supporting us worldwide. And we'd like to thank them in this little special way. And we have a panel of experts from around the globe and there's many, many more. We can't fit them all onto one screen, but um, greatly appreciate all their uh, help. And um, we look forward to much, much more uh, collaboration in the, in the future. More and more testimonials from people working with the system around the globe. Of course, you will find all this on our digital presence. We're in several perio programs in uh, several universities around the globe, which is really, really gratifying and very, very uh, humbling for us. Uh, and we appreciate it greatly. So we keep innovating. Uh, Vergulis Paps Innovation is a bit corny, but that's what it stands for. And I'd like to show you something that we're working on because the direction is digital and Ivy Cervical is here. So this is a custom healing abutment slash scan post. This will this is made from zirconia with a tie base connection, and this is positioned in the mouth and not removed until the final restoration is finished and positioned. So you break the hesmidesmal sermal attachment one time only. Scanning is done. We're using the medit. It seems to be working fine in our hands. And Spiros Arinos, uh, great support for us and been helping us all the way through this. Wonderful young guy and he knows a lot about the, the scanners. We created the program within ExoCut. And this is where all the magic happens. 
boom, it's in. With all the scanning architecture on top, and we're able to replicate the cervical shape and size that you've created with your healing cap. And all this information is given to the lab and they're able to create the exact submergence profile. And of course the finished unit on top. So we're looking forward to the future with this and uh, a lot of upgrades on it as, as well at the, at the moment where me and Ioannis are continuously forging forward, trying to innovate as much as possible. A lot of passion and love goes into it, so we look forward to the future. This is our digital presence, our Facebook pages, user groups, YouTube channel, Instagram, and the website. So please follow us and, uh, and communicate with us whenever you want. We're here for you. IDS, hopefully COVID, will be able to get through it. And the IDS at the moment, from, uh, from the IDS, it seems like everything is, uh, is going to schedule. 2021, this was our last one in, 19, in 2019. Uh, so we're really, really looking forward to meeting everyone again and uh, we'd love to see you there. Again, sorry about all the technical details that we had and all the problems that we had uh, in the last couple of uh, uh, webinars that we tried to do. Unfortunately, it just didn't work for us, but um, I'm happy to be able to be here and do the video for you. So thank you so much and um, thank you for your attention. Stay safe everybody through all this storm and I'm sure at the back end we'll be okay. Uh, hopefully all, everything will be fine in the next few months. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.